Hello, my Happy Crumpin' Wargamers. Welcome back to Happy Crumpin' Wargaming. Today, we're going to talk about an extremely important subject, which is maximizing your CP. A lot of people really, really struggle to optimally use their CP, and it can really, really lose some games. So we're going to give a, a few ideas and tips about how to make sure that you get the most out of your CP possible. Just a really quick, super exciting announcement. Today, I'm really pleased to announce that we have a new channel sponsor to joining Wayland Utani Gains, who do absolutely make the absolute best terrain in the business. They are going to be uh, joined by the Baron of Dice, who will be the official dice supplier for Happy Crump and Wargaming. And I am thrilled to announce the partnership with you. We actually have a channel custom dice that will be going into production very, very soon, as if, as in like, perhaps in the next five minutes, and then it'll take approximately eight weeks for them to get arri to arrive, but then they will be available for order on the Baron of Dice website. So I'm very excited to announce that. You can use code CRUMPING5 so that you can get 5% off all of your beautiful dice needs. Well, let's get into the video for today. Today, we are talking about CP optimization, and this is a huge issue for many, many army lists. And in all reality, there's only approximately three ways for you to ever get CP in your army. Well, well, I guess four ways if you include naturally. So naturally, everyone starts at zero CP, and every single turn, you get one. That's going to be both player turns. So every battle round, you effectively will get two CP. Now, special abilities for certain units can increase this. So think about the Altark Way Leaper from Eldar. It's going to give you an extra CP every turn. Uh, Lord Leontis or Solar Leontis will do this as well. Uh, then you have other units that have special abilities that have qualifiers that can generate CP. So Gretchen, for example, if they're controlling an objective at the start of a command phase, then on a four up, they'll generate you a CP. So there's there's lots of these. Uh, some units have like automatic abilities. Others have qualifier abilities. But then the other way to generate CP is going to be through the use of tactical second Dairies. And this is uh, something that a lot of people like to frown upon when they talk about, but I actually feel it's really important for us to understand the concept of trading potential victory points for CP to enable victory points later down the game. So let's chat about that today. First off, CP economy. One of the things that we have to decide is we have to decide what is actually going to be worth your CP. There's a lot of stratagems in the game that might seem like, oh, well, that's not bad, but is it really worth your CP? For example, in the new Kosodes decks, we have a fight on death, which applies to a character model. Well, is two CP uh, for allowing one single model to fight on death really worth it? I can think of a scenario where it would be worth it, but is it worth it generally speaking? And the answer is almost always going to be no in that particular scenario. So how much CP do your stratagems cost? That's going to be another consider consideration that we have to take under advisement. So is your CP one? Is your stratagem one CP? Is your stratagem two CP? Are you vetted? Meaning uh, someone has used a special ability to make your uh, stratagems cost more command points. Um, if that's the scenario, perhaps it's not worth it to reroll a die where typically maybe you would want to spend a CP to reroll a die. So these are things we got to consider. So let's, let's talk about that first thing that, uh, that first thing to really, really talk about when it comes to saving CP, which is the command point reroll. Let's just be honest, everyone. This is probably the main area where most of you waste your CP. Most people throw their CP away on command point rerolls. This is very typically the last place I will ever want to actually spend CP. The only time I really think that you should ever actually be using the command point reroll is a very, very small handful of scenarios. One of those being you have a six or five inch charge that you have to make. You've banked your game plan. You were intelligent. You put yourself in the position to make sure you have a five or six inch charge, things that should occur. And your entire game plan is riding on you making this charge and you roll double ones. This is a place where I would absolutely highly recommend spending a CP to re-roll that charge. If you are trying to make a nine inch deep strike charge, I would never waste a CP on that. The, the odds on you making it are really, really bad. And it's basically you just throwing CP in the garbage can and then later on complaining that you don't have enough CP. Um, another it's a scenario where I might consider using command point reroll is it is the absolute end of your opponent's activation. They're hitting your avatar of Kane and your avatar fails his final last save that was going to take his last wound off of him. But for the low price of one CP, you could re-roll it and potentially save your avatar of Kane on a 50-50 chance. Which would allow him then to sweep back, kill the enemy unit, and then get to activate in your turn. 
In that scenario, I would consider, sp consider spending a CP for it because you got a 50% chance of making it and it can really swing the game in your uh, in your favor. Now, if you're trying to bank on a, on like a six up invulnerable save, I would say no chance, absolutely not. But if you're having a 50% chance to actually just give your super powered unit an entire extra turn to activate, that might be a time where I'm willing to gamble on it as well. Speaking about charges though, let's look at the actual odds of making charges. I feel like a lot of people don't really understand a couple things about averages and they don't really understand just how bad some of the odds of making charges are. If you are going for a 12 inch charge, you have a 3% chance of making that charge. It is real bad. Now, I do not know who made this little graphic, but it's hilarious. It's very funny. You've got the brave heroic raptor looking to rumble and the cowardly towel asshole who is at the end of it. This is just very, very funny. I don't know who to give credit for it, uh, but it's really fun. And someone posted it in my Discord, so I am repurposing it. So credit to artist who is unknown by me. Anyway, so you only have a 3% chance of making that 12-inch charge. The most common charges that people are generally looking for, or, or one of the one that comes up the most, is going to be that 9-inch charge. That 9-inch charge is actually a horrible gamble. If you look at it here, it's 28%. Now, I think the mathematics break down to actually like 27.8% for all of you super nerds out there, but whatever, it's 28%. So you have slightly over a quarter percent of a, uh, like, uh, you have slightly over a 25% chance to make this 9-inch charge, which means really one out of every four times you're going to make it now spending a cp to re-roll that not really a good game plan because unfortunately when you spend a cp to re-roll this it doesn't double your chances you're thinking oh i've got 28 percent chance so if i double that that would give me a oh uh, what is that 50 58 chance but it doesn't give you a 58 percent chance it, it just or a 56 percent chance it doesn't give that to you it actually only ends up give, give you somewhere around the lines of a 47.8 percent chance which means it's a bad gamble it's a it, and it, that's all it is it's just a gamble it's not positioning yourself for success it's actually just gambling and we don't want to gamble in this game we want to put ourselves in positions where the dice can't screw us or if they can screw us, it's exceptionally unlikely. But if you're going for a 9-inch charge and you're complaining that you went for 12 9-inch charges and you didn't make any of them, well, that's because you shouldn't have made them. So this is, leads me on to another subject here. People have a very, very strong misunderstanding of what average actually means. So let me break it down for you. When you're rolling two dice, just in this charge example, a 7 is the average for the dice roll. Meaning, if you... Divide like 12 by 2, it's going to be like 6. And so if you're taking two dice, one of them the lowest value being a 1, 7 is going to be the most often number that pops up. But that doesn't mean that you are really more likely to roll a 7 than you are a 12 or a 1 or a, or I mean, or a 2 or something like that. Instead, what I really want you to think about is what it means is that 50% of the time your roll will be 7 or less. And 7% and 50% of the time, your roll will be seven or more. So if you fail a seven inch charge, it's not that you are on average supposed to roll the seven. It's that 50% of the time it was supposed to be seven or less. And you happen to roll literally 50% of the time where it was supposed to be seven or less. It's, it's not inconceivable at all to miss a seven inch charge. A seven inch charge is not reliable. Now you start getting reliable when you getting in, start getting into the six inch numbers. So suddenly it's a, you get that seventy two percent chance, which means you have like a much higher success rate of getting under that seven or that seven number. So that's where it actually becomes quite good. So if I'm going to be spending CP to reroll, I'm only going to be spending CP to reroll things that are going to be maybe that seven inch charge i might start considering it but really it's that six inch and down that i'm going to be cp re-rolling our charge the only scenario where i will re-roll the nine inch charge or the 10 inch charge or even above and, and i have done it is if the game rests on that roll if the game is screwed there's no chance of winning unless you land this night this 11 inch charge okay why not spend the cp to re-roll that because if i don't make it i lose anyway in that scenario i can understand it outside of that don't be CP re-rolling those long bomb charges, everyone. All right, now let's talk about a really contentious one that I see people mess up a lot. And this is one where you have the most amount of player agency to really influence the amount of command points that you have accessible to you. So this is when to discard our secondaries. If you're playing tactical secondaries, because you, you don't have this, this option if you're playing fixed. So this only applies to tactical secondaries. 
first thing that you need to do is at the beginning of the game, you need to identify how much CP you need. Now, a lot of times I will run tactical simply because I want more CP in my army and I don't have other ways of generating it. So I don't have access to an Altark Way Leaper because I'm not a scaredy cat who plays pointy eared elves. Sorry, uh, that was a little rude. I'm not actually sorry because pointy eared elves suck. Anyway, all right. So one of the things I like to think about, if I'm playing orcs, for example, I know on my turn two or my turn three, whatever my go turn is, I must have four CP because I'm going to want to spend one CP for here we go for plus one for plus two to advance and plus two to charge. I'm going to need two CP to make sure I can fight on death and I'm going to need one CP to make sure that I can explode on fives. This is assuming that we're playing the index detachment or the now called warhorde detachment. So I know I need four CP on my go turn. And most of the time, my go turn is going to be turn two or turn three. If I go first, I know that I generate one CP in my turn. I generate one CP in my opponent's turn. And then I will generate one CP in my turn in turn two, in, in battle round two. Well, that is supposed to be my go turn. So I only have three, three CP accessible to me, which means I don't have enough CP to make my go turn count. So in that scenario, I need to make sure I discard a tactical secondary in battle round one, meaning that if I went first, I would have access to all four of those secondaries. Now, if I was going second, I wouldn't actually have to discard anything to get to the four CP that I need for that go turn, but I would have to make sure that I don't spend CP on anything else. So it can be really tricky. The thing that I like is I like to give myself a buffer to give myself five CP in case of disaster. Let's say I was making an advance and I need it to be a two and I rolled a one. Well, I really need the ability to reroll that one so that I can get myself in position, but then I still need four CP to be effective. So in that scenario, what I would do is if I went first, I would have to understand that it's going to be impossible for me to have the five CP. So it might be better for me to plan on making my go turn in battle round three instead of in battle round two. On the other side, let's say I went second, it might, I can definitely guarantee that I'll get four by the time I, uh, I'm ready for battle round two, since I went second. But if I discard a C, if I discard a tactical card in turn one, then I can get myself to the sweet, sweet five CP, which I need. So based on whether or not I go first or second, I get to change where I really want my go turn to be in this scenario. So this also means occasionally that I might discard secondaries that I actually could score. And this is something that most people don't like to talk about. And honestly, I would recommend not doing this very often unless you're practiced with the um, with the game and you really know what you're doing with it. So let's say, for example, that it's battle round one. I know I need four CP and that the start of battle round two and I draw investigate signals and I could easily do the investigate signals for two to, for two victory points. Is that two victory points worth it to me or is making sure that I have the four CP I need in battle round two? more valuable to me. In that scenario, I would actually probably discard Investigate Signals, even though I could score it, just to make sure that I have the CP that is available to me. So let's go through a few scenarios where we would want to do this. First scenario, um, where you want to discard a, a tactical secondary, you can't score it anyway. You can't score it, get rid of it. I recommend never, ever holding on to a secondary card unless it will dramatically change your opponent's game plan or you are a hundred percent certain that you will score it next turn and it is worth significant victory points. So that's a lot to unpack. So let's talk about that for just a moment. All right. Unless it dramatically changes your opponent's game plan. What does that mean? Well, if I have drawn capture enemy outpost and my opponent is stretched very, very thin, like very, very thin, and he really doesn't want to have to leave a unit in his backfield to screen his home field because he knows if he does, it's going to really screw up his pressure in the, the rest of the battlefield. I might actually hold on to capture enemy outposts just to force my opponent to leave that very valuable unit in his backfield, which means he can't hold the midfield, which means I can then get the pressure I need to win. So in that scenario, I might actually hold on to a card just to force my opponent to play in a specific way. Because if he doesn't leave it back there, then he's essentially just handing me eight victory points. All right. And then you never want to hold on to a, uh, to a card unless you're 100% certain that you're going to score it next turn. And it's worth significant victory points. What does significant victory points mean? Well, I'm not going to hold on to investigate signals so I can score two victory points next turn. Zero chance of that. A command point is much more valuable for that than that. I 
If I have a five victory point area denial, however, I I seriously doubt I'm ever going to discard that for command points. I'm pretty much always just going to score the five victory points for area denial. All right. So if I can get three victory points for deploy teleport hummers in the middle, or I can give fight on death to a unit that I desperately need to give fight to, on death to. Well, fight on death in my turn to make sure that I can, you know, or in my opponent's turn to make sure that when they charge me, I can kill them back. That might be worth not getting the three victory points. Um, I, I, can, I can make that work. But... I'm never going to be really discarding a five victory point card unless it's an extreme scenario. So basically, these are the decisions. And uh, while in the short term, you're going to lose victory points, you can absolutely win games by deciding when to hold a card or when to get rid of the card. So this is my uh, little guide here for you today on how to make sure that you optimize your CP. The main takeaway is identify what you actually need CP for. Identify what's worth spending CP on, because I can guarantee you that in most of your indexes, you're going to have at least two stratagems that are not really worth using most of the time. And then out of the core uh, stratagems, there's going to be a lot of them that you should really not use CP on. The foremost of those is going to be command point reroll, unless, like we spoke about earlier, you're in a scenario where you 100% have to make this or you just lose. So hope this was useful for you guys. Uh, these little tactical guides are really valuable for me when I was uh, getting started in Warhammer and my mentors would kind of give me these rundowns. So I'm passing it on to you to make sure that we can all crump with big smiles on our faces and enjoy the game that we love so much more every single day. And until next time, I hope you all crump on and I'm really excited for a bunch of the new stuff that I have. And once again, big shout out to uh, the Baron of Dice because... That guy is making some really sick channel dice, and I can't wait to share them with you guys on a later stream. Anyway, have a great day. Bye.